Welcome back! If we've made it this far, it's time to build a real async Python application and we'll build a web scraper. The first thing you should know is that when building asynchronous Python applications, you are not allowed to use any Python module, but only modules that use awaitable functions or coroutines which are not blocking and are compatible with the async.io library. For example, when someone says HTTP or web scraping, most of the time he thinks of a library called requests. However, requests, which is by the way an awesome library, is not compatible with async.io and cannot be used in async applications. Requests is built on top of URL lib3, which in turn uses Python's HTTP and socket modules, and by default, socket operations are blocking. Here, you'll find a list of Python libraries that can be used with async.io to build asynchronous applications. So instead of using requests, we'll use another library called AIO HTTP, which defines awaitable coroutines. Let's go to coding. I'm creating a new Python script. The program will grab a web page from a specific URL and save the source code of that web page to a file. And it will do it asynchronously. Let's import the required libraries. So import async.io. AIO HTTP is not a Python standard library and we have to install it. So I'm installing AIO HTTP. File. Settings, Interpreter, Project Interpreter, and I'm clicking on this plus sign. And I'm searching for AIO HTTP. I'm installing the package, the library. Okay, the package was installed successfully. I'm importing it in my application. To save the web page source code into a file, we cannot use ordinary local file I.O. because it's blocking. To read from or write to files asynchronously, we have to use a library called AIO files. This isn't a Python standard library and we have to install it. I'm installing AIO files. and I'm importing it. Next, I'll define a coroutine, which is an ordinary function defined using the async keyword. The coroutine will be called fetch, gets as argument a new URL, and returns the HTML code of the page from that URL. So async df fetch and URL as argument. Let's write the code and then I'll explain to you in detail what it does. Async with AIO HTTP dot client session as session and response equals await session dot get of URL. On this line, I'm calling the session.get coroutine and as any coroutine, I have to await it. And the content of the page, HTML equals await response.text, where text is a method of the response object. And I'm returning the variable called HTML. In this piece of code, I've used some new constructions. An async with does exactly the same thing as the ordinary with keyword, except that where an ordinary with statement calls ordinary functions or methods, an async with statement calls async methods. So in short, with blocks are used to call some functions, and since with async await Python now has two kinds of functions, it also needs two kinds of with blocks. Let's define another coroutine that writes some text to a file. 
async df write to file. And the first argument is the file, and the second one, the text to write to that file. In this function, I'll use the AIO files module. So async with AIO files dot open of file, the mode is W, I'll open the file in write mode as F and the weight F dot write of text. Using AIO files is similar to using the regular Python methods for working with files. Just don't forget to await each coroutine. Without this await, I'll get an error. We'll follow the classical pattern of an async app and we'll create the top level coroutine, which is main. By the way, the name main is not a language keyword. You can give it any name you want. So async df main. This coroutine takes as argument a tuple of some URLs and calls or awaits the fetch coroutine we've just defined for each URL. Each call to fetch will return the web page source code. And another call to write to file will save the output, the source code, to a text file. So URLs. This is a tuple of URLs. Each coroutine will create a task that will be spawned asynchronously. The tasks will be saved into a list. So tasks equals empty list. And for URL in URLs, I'm iterating over the URLs and I'll construct the file name to which I write the source code of each URL. So file equals an F string literal and I'll split the URL to have something like domain name.txt. So url.split, I'm splitting by double four slashes, taking the last element and I'm appending .txt. If you want, you can print it out. And I'm calling or awaiting the fetch coroutine. HTML equals await fetch of URL and tasks that append of write to file of file and HTML. And outside the for loop, I'll schedule the coroutine to run as soon as possible by gathering the tasks like this. Await async.io dot gather of star tasks. The entrance point of any async.io program is async.io.run which takes as argument the top level coroutine, which is main. Async.io.run was introduced in Python 3.7 and calling it creates the event loop and runs a coroutine on it. I'm creating a tuple with some URLs and then I'll call async.io.run. So URLs equals and the tuple of some URLs. async.io.run of main of URLs. That's our application. And I'm running the script. Okay, there is an error. Okay, sorry, this is a method, so we have to call it client session and a pair of parentheses. I'm running it again. It's connecting to each web server using AIO HTTP and grabbing the page HTML content, which is then saved to a text file asynchronously. In the left panel, we notice three files that were created. It's the HTML source code of these web pages. If we were to measure the execution time, we would notice that it's much faster than its synchronously counterpart. 